evening and welcome to India Roundup. I'm Chandni Krishnan and here are the top national headlines of the week. Prime Minister Modi announced a 20 lakh crore corona relief package referred to as Atmar Nirbhar Pak. The breakup, first tranche, 6 lakh crores for MSMEs that employ around 11 crore people. Second tranche, rupees 310,000 crore to support around 50 lakh street vendors with access to an initial rupees 10,000 working capital, rupees 2 lakh crore to farmers through Kisan credit cards benefiting 2.5 crore farmers and fishermen, rupees 11,000 crore to states to manage food and shelter for migrants. Third tranche, rupees 150,000 crores, rupees 1 lakh crore agriculture infrastructure fund for farm gate infrastructure including using it for setting up coal chains and post harvest management infrastructure fourth and fifth tranches rupees 48100 crores comprised of reforms for sectors including coal minerals defense production airspace management airports mro distribution companies in uts space sector and atomic energy Lockdown 4 extended till 31st May. India entered into the fourth phase of lockdown from May 18, but with a different set of rules and guidelines as was issued by the Home Ministry on Sunday. While several relaxations have been allowed, including interstate movement of passenger vehicles and buses, and opening of sports complexes and stadiums, schools, malls and restaurants would still remain shut and suspension of flights and metro services would remain in force till May 31st. India's health minister elected as executive chairman of World Health Organization. India would now be playing a more prominent role at the World Health Organization, with Union Health Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan reportedly set to take charge as chairman of the WHO Executive Board at its 147th session. Dr. Vardhan would succeed Dr. Hiroki Nakatani of Japan, who is currently the chairman of the 34-member WHO Executive Board. The board chairman's post is held by rotation for one year by each of the WHO's six airlines to resume operations from 25th May. Passengers need to download a government contact tracing app and will also be subject to thermal screening. Flyers will also need to wear masks and gloves while inside airports. Civil Aviation Minister Hardeep Puri said all airports and airlines had been told to prepare for operations. Waiting areas will have marked seats that cannot be used and the use of luggage trolleys will be discouraged. Baggage will be sanitized before flyers are allowed to enter and mats and carpets soaked with the bleach will be placed at terminal entrances to disinfect shoes. Kerala's efforts on controlling corona cases applauded by many countries. The tourist haven with backwaters and coconut groves was the first to report confirmed cases of COVID-19 in India, three returning medical students from Wuhan, China. The reason Kerala has managed to come out the other side so quickly is because of its strong public health system, clear risk communication and community participation. Board exams for 10th and 12th to start from 1st July and colleges to start 2020 session from 1st September onwards. Central Board of Secondary Education, CBSE, has announced that class 10th and 12th examinations will start on 1st July 2020 and will end on 15 July 2020. Apart from the date sheet, the board has also shared the guidelines for students who will appear in the exams. Colleges to start 2020 session from 1st September onwards. College sessions will begin in August for current students and September for new ones, the University Grants Commission said on Wednesday. The admission process in universities will also begin from August. Indian government organizes biggest ever repatriation mission of its citizens stuck abroad. India has started evacuating 192,000 people in the first phase of the evacuation, which started on May 7th with a focus on the Gulf countries. In the second phase, India will start evacuation of its citizens from Iran, USA, UK and Malaysia. Indian missions across the world are already preparing a list of distressed Indian citizens. 
Thousands of migrants stuck in cities due to the lockdown start returning to their home states. 11 trains carrying around 12,000 migrant workers have left Kerala, four states such as Jharkhand, Bihar and Odisha. In Mumbai, over 14 lakh migrants have been sent back to their states, according to Cabinet Minister and State Nationalist Congress Party Chief Jayant Patil. The MCP leader says that 3 lakh more are to leave in 200 trains next week. 6 lakh workers have left for their states since the lockdown began, Patil said. That's all from me for today. Please wait to hear other interesting stories. When business is on your mind, you are on our mind. Sarovar Hotels and Resorts. And here are the top business headlines of the week. Reliance raises 67,000 crores by selling minority stake in Geo. It is looking to lure 1,000 companies to move from China to India. Microsoft scripting its biggest investment in India. Tourism industry proposes a special distress fund to support survival. 70% of hotels and restaurants can close in 45 days, warns FHRAI after no relief from government. And now the news. Reliance raises 67,000 crores by selling minority stake in GEO. Silver Lake, the well-known and well-funded private equity firm, announced earlier this week that they would invest 56.56 billion Indian rupees about 747 million US dollars in Geo Platforms, the largest Indian-based telecommunications company, and also the owner of various consumer digital services, such as the music platform. Just two weeks ago, Facebook invested 5.7 billion US dollars in Geo, which is owned by Reliance Industries, the largest private sector company in India. Next, India looking to lure 1,000 companies to move from China to India. India is seeking to lure in U.S. businesses to relocate from China as U.S. administration steps up effort to blame Beijing for its role in the coronavirus pandemic. The government last month reached out to more than 1,000 companies in the United States and to overseas missions to offer incentives for manufacturers seeking to move out of China. According to Indian officials, who asked not to be identified, citing rules on speaking with the media. India is prioritizing medical equipment suppliers, food processing units, textiles, leather, and auto part makers among more than 550 products covered in the discussions, they said. Microsoft scripting its biggest investment in India. Microsoft will invest 5 billion US dollars in IoT over the next four years. IoT is gathering momentum in India and impacting daily lives, saving electricity, resources, predictive healthcare, automobile safety, and more. Microsoft Azure is a preferred platform powering a variety of IoT devices. IoT monitoring of water quality. Authorities across state have turned to IoT to monitor drinking water quality for its citizens. Microsoft Azure IoT is powering India's first smart street lighting project for the pink city of Jaipur, underscoring Microsoft's mission. In other news, Tourism industry proposes a special distress fund to support survival. In a meeting with the Ministry of Tourism, officials have proposed a special debt instrument or distress fund to finance the survival plans of business industry in the country. The industry has proposed a sector-specific fund to extend long-term interest-free loans to save the industry from the COVID-19 distress. The meeting was attended by the association heads of all the 10 trade associations which make up the Federation of Associations of Indian Tourism and Hospitality, FAITH, CII, FICCI, and PhD Chambers. The meeting proposed double weightage exemptions to corporate entities to hold the meetings and conferences inside the country. The government should also waive GST on the sector to encourage people to travel within the country. In related news, 70% of hotels and restaurants can close in 45 days, warns FHRAI, after no relief from government. The hospitality and travel sector, contributing 10% of India's GDP, is expecting an urgent relief from the centre to stay afloat. India has about 53,000 hotels and 70 lakh restaurants, and in case of receiving no government relief, many will have to shut down operations, claims industry body FHRAI. That's all for me today. Please wait to hear other interesting stories. Nationalities will echo through the streets. They will fill the city.
from the mountain peaks to the furthest reaches of the golden dunes. The world will soon return, and Abu Dhabi will be waiting with open arms. So the first news from the entertainment section is Bollywood's latest import, Georgia and Granny, says that Gay Krishi Kapoor was one of her inspirations. The 23-year-old actress will be seen in Welcome to Bajrampur alongside Shreya Talpad. After Rishi Kapoor's demise, she posted a video of one of his songs on Instagram. She is also a big fan of his dancing. Anurag Kashyap raises funds for COVID-19 test kits in India. Filmmaker Anurag Kashyap has decided to put his Filmfare trophy on auction to raise money for COVID-19 test kits. Now for all those who are waiting for their favorite TV shows, there's a news that TV shooting will not resume from June end. Ashok Dubey, the General Secretary of FWICE, said that no TV show shoot will resume from June end. His statement came a week after the President of FWICE, BN Tiwari, said that the TV show shooting will resume from June end. Pooja Bedi unhappy of quarantine facility in Goa. Pooja shared a video from the facility and said that it wasn't sanitized. Such houses will lead to more people getting infected. Talking about her moving to Goa amid lockdown, Pooja said, Goa, it's my hometown. I refuse to be a soft target of people who are embittered, jealous, fearful and narrow-minded. They should clear their facts before they attack. Celebrities donated towards COVID-19 PM Cares Fund. Many celebrities came forward to contribute and also urged their friends to do their bit to help the government fight against coronavirus outbreak. Here's how much they contributed. Akshay Kumar, 25 crores. Varun Grover, 30 lakhs. Many others also contributed, but their donation amount is not public. time for some health news. Everyone wants to know how to keep your body fit to fight against coronavirus. So the first step is to boost your immunity you should consume green tea, fruits and protein rich diet that should be taken in right amounts and at regular intervals. So here's some good news from the health section. Indian researchers have developed a device to detect COVID-19 in 30 seconds. That's all from today's news bulletin. Hope you enjoyed today's program. See you next week with some more interesting stories.